How you doing? I'm out here for a quick one-nighter in the bush. Uh, temperatures around zero. We got a couple inches of snow on the ground and it might get down to minus five tonight. So I'm, I'm feeling okay with all that. Got enough clothes, got a warm sleeping bag and probably get a fire going too. Tonight I got a brand new tent to try out. It's a uh, lightweight teepee and it sets up with one little trekking pole. So that makes it really convenient and I can't wait to give it a go. But I better hurry up because look at that, the sun's already set and I got a late start. So I gotta find a nice flat spot and some nice firewood and we'll, uh, we'll get her going. All right, let's do it. So before I carry on with my tent setup right here, just wanted to show my pack. It's a it's a 3FUL pack from AliExpress with the uh, sleeping mat pad in the back. It's got a great little pocket up front. It's quite dark right now, but big elastic pocket up front there and some water bottle holders on either side. I find it very comfortable. I love this thing. I'm about six foot two, 185 pounds, and I can make this thing uh, fit me quite well. So this uh, tent is just a little bit higher than the maximum height of a uh, your average trekking pole. And so I built this um, extension. I'll show you how that works. There's the trekking pole. And here's the tip end. And this is just a hollow aluminum pipe. Fits right on the end like that, beautifully snug. And Bob's your uncle. Then I put this little round ball on the end so that it wouldn't pierce the uh, teepee in the top reinforced area. But the fit of this pipe is extraordinary. I can't remember what size. I'm, I'm thinking 5 8 And just for this particular trekking pole, fits right on. And then I put it upside down the snow and uh, it's the perfect height. It's my first time setting it up, never mind out in the snow, so it may take a little while. <laughs> I see that I could I could set it up so that the, the bottom of the tent is a couple inches off the ground, but because of uh, it being winter and I don't want cold air to come in, I'm going to pull this tight and set it up snug to the ground. Oh, that ground is frozen. <laughs> this could be a problem. Ah, no problem. <laughs> Lucky for me, the ground isn't too frozen yet. So it's an eight-sided teepee style tent. 
I just pegged out all the corners uh, as tight as I could, but I'm feeling that I didn't get a perfect octagon, so I might have to rejig some of those uh, stakes. Uh, next thing is to put the uh, trekking pole together with its extension and then pop that in the center. Oh, this really looks out of whack from this perspective. <laughs> There's the door, by the way. The zipper goes right to the top. One door on this guy. Put this at its maximum height. Maximum allowable height is 54 inches on this. Plus about a 10 foot extension. I believe that's what it is. Brings it to 64 inches total. That should do it. So I'm pleased with how that looks, but I'm still not convinced I have the perimeter stakes in the right position, in the right spots. It looks like it's just not sitting as geometrically perfect as it could, but it's not bad. As you can see right here, doot, 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 it's got a, uh, a Velcro vent that you could put a, you know, a, a chimney, um, um, uh, a wood stove pipe through if you wanted to heat it with that. Um, I don't have a wood stove with me tonight, so I'm just going to uh, close that up and pr try and perfect the, uh, the geometry here before those stakes get frozen solid into the ground and I won't be moving anything. It's 4.45 now and the sky is getting paler and paler I better make a I better move on quickly anyway I fixed up the tent and there's you know it's a really nice tent the quality is excellent from what I've seen all the stitching is beautiful and it was uh you know once you figure out how to set up an octagon um quickly it doesn't take much time at all just eight pegs I see that there's another eight pegs with tie-outs mid-height so that you could really get this thing ratcheted down if it was windy. It's perfectly calm here tonight, so I'm not going to do any of that. I feel like it's very stable as is with just that one walking stick and the extension inside. You can see that it has that Velcro vent that I mentioned. And then these two kind of vents up top that uh, there is mesh inside, but they don't really hold open. <laughs> so I'm not sure how effective they are. They don't stay open. Maybe I could put a, a small stick or something in there to try and prop those open a little better. There's one more on the other side here. As you can see, it lies quite flat against the tent and needs a little help, but it's an excellent tent. I'm very happy with this investment. Let's take a look inside and see what we got. Alrighty. It's going to be difficult to give you a perspective on this, but it feels very roomy. I'll just close this up. Now, mind you, um, it's only what, what, would, what did we say that is? 64 inches tall, so five feet in a little bit. But it feels like there's a lot of room here from side to side. Easily fit two people, one on either side of this trekking pole. So one over here, and then one where I'm sitting right now. 
here's another perspective on the tent with the door open. Oh. <laughs> you can see it's got massive amounts of room inside. For a pound and a half, that is a load of room inside. Okay, just before it gets too dark to film anymore, I'll show you some of the things I brought. There's my down puffy jacket for when it gets chilly. And here's basically the contents I brought along tonight. I've got a, uh, a winter climate sleeping bag, sleeping pad, um, some nice warm gloves. I've got a uh, emergency bivy sack in case I need something extra tonight. Uh, in the black thing there is a Yuko candle that I want to burn in the, in the tent tonight to keep condensation down. In the back there is a food bag for dinner and breakfast. Um, what else do we have here? A first aid kit, string, um, toiletries, my cook kit. It's an alcohol stove cook kit. And there's some there's some odds and ends, ditty bag. And uh, an extra bottle. Here's my sleeping, or my backpack. And in here I have uh, basically a nice big fluffy down sleeping bag. It'll take me to minus five. And then, uh, oh, what do we got here? A reflective ground sheet for that I can sleep on tonight. So I always bring that with me. It's very handy. It keeps you dry. And a water bottle on that side as well. So pretty simple, but that'll be enough for a one-nighter. Oh, and this. This is my folding saw that I bring on winter trips. It's not ultra light, but it is ultra good. The Corona razor tooth saw really makes short work of, uh, of wood for a nice fire. Aha, perfect. A white birch. Get my fire going with some of this bark. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, nice. This is just what I need. some uh, kindling, some birch bark, a load of wood, and I uh, cut up a few pieces so that I can build the fire up on the snow. That helps a lot. And then there's some extra if I need it. I usually get way too much firewood, more than I need, but this was all dead wood that I spotted on the way in, so it was all ready to be burned. And I got a good safe distance from the sill nylon tent because I don't need any spark holes tonight. beautiful than fire <laughs> and then juxtaposed against snow on a cold evening it's just fantastic can you hear the uh, coyotes All right. 
right, let's try and make some uh, some dinner tonight. I've got my trusty 750 mil pot. And get rid of the grass. <laughs> it's funny. That is going to be our cook system tonight an alcohol stove. This is our, our alcohol. One ounce should do the job. Oh, I got a little measuring cup for one ounce. There we go. Carefully pour that in there. Maybe a little extra because it's cold out tonight. Boop. A little extra. There we go. There we go. Yeah, it's caught now. Hard to see, but it is. Put the windscreen around it. Okay, so the plan for tonight is dehydrated pulled pork and mashed potatoes. All right. Let's see. Here's the plan for tonight. Got a hot apple cider going on. Boop. We've got some buttery herb Idaho and potatoes. Mmm, that's going to be delicious. And the protein here is some dehydrated pulled pork. I haven't done this before, but uh, I think it'll work. I just dehydrated a whole load of pulled pork and then made these little tiny packages. I'm hoping this uh, expands to a good amount. Mix it with the potatoes. Should have a nice little meal going. And here's our alcohol stove burning away. Oh, we're getting some steam. We might have hot water soon. Now, let's put in the pulled pork. Mm, that smells good. Barbecue pulled pork. Well, that'll bring the coyotes. Let's put the lid back on there. And then some of this mashed potato goodness. There's no way I need all of this. It's way too much. how to judge this but <laughs> just uh, do trial and error I suppose pour some in mix it up Let's see how it goes uh, that seems too watery pour some more in well, that seems to be thickening up now I'll let all that sit for a couple minutes and see where we're at The lovely part about snow, it makes a great stand. Well, that is a fantastic meal. It takes about one minute to prepare. Now, that might not look very appetizing. As a matter of fact, I know that doesn't look very appetizing. But it's mashed potatoes, buttery mashed potatoes with pulled pork. I think it's going to taste awesome. <laughs> Kind of looks questionable, but let's have a go. But I just want to let you know that this is the bomb. This is an awesome meal for camping. So easy to prepare, 
well, once you have dehydrated pulled pork. So easy to put together on, on camp. And I'm sure there's a ton of calories in here, plus good proteins, plus great flavor. All right, cheers. I'm going to eat this up and not force you to watch me do it. All right, we'll see you later. So the time is, oh, probably 7 o'clock or so. And uh, it's pitch dark out here. The stars are out. It's very, very quiet. I'm probably going to bed early, but I'll sit around the campfire for a while and enjoy um, a little treat that I brought along. I'll show you that later. <laughs> and then uh, we'll settle in early tonight and get a good sleep. Okay, here's our setup for tonight. There we go. We got the winter mat blown up underneath. And a nice warm sleeping bag on top. And a few extras here at the back, at the head. Got a pillow blown up inside there. I'm just going to let that loft up for an hour or so before I go to bed. Just enjoying the fire tonight, and I thought I'd share with you my secret ingredient. <laughs> little fireball. I never have this at home. It's almost exclusively just for camping. There's something about the uh, cinnamon whiskey that uh, warms you up. Makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So I'm going to have some of that tonight, just a little sip, and maybe some of these. And the reason I do these is you want to get yourself some calories in your body for, uh, you know, staying warm through the night. It's not your typical night out in the tent. It's one where you have to uh, generate a lot of heat, so having calories in your body is going to uh, help you do that. Just before bed, I'm gonna heat up some uh, hot water in this stainless steel bottle, and then I'll put that in a sock, and I'll have a nice little hot water bottle for bed. That's the theory anyway. As long as it doesn't leak, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> I've done it before, and it's the nicest thing ever, so that's what I'm gonna do tonight. Time to call it a night. It's been a great day. It's been a beautiful day in the forest, actually. So I'm gonna get to bed and hopefully sleep a solid eight hours, wake up tomorrow and have a good breakfast. See how it all goes. Okay, unless something weird happens, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great night, everybody. Hey. Good morning. <laughs> well, the sky is getting bright. I think it's time to get up, make a fire, have some breakfast. <laughs> you first. <laughs> Well, here we are around the campfire. 
I'm feeling toasty warm again. It was a cold night. Um, no doubt about it. You know, it was definitely, I think they said minus five. And uh, I was kind of pushing the limits of that down sleeping bag. So I had my down puffy on as well. And uh, yeah, I had the hot water bottle. And so it worked out, it worked out just fine. Woke up a few times. The biggest, the biggest problem with sleeping on snow, I find, is that uh, no matter what you put underneath you, everything just kind of slips sliding around. So you're trying to keep, you know, the, the mat underneath you, and then your sleeping mattress on top of that, and your sleeping bag on top of that. And so you're trying to keep this really nice little pile of things that's going to be dry and toasty warm. But as soon as you move, you slip <laughs> because there's there's snow underneath you, which is now starting to freeze and form a, like an icy coat on it. So that's the challenge of sleeping on the snow. It's not a big deal. It worked out just fine. But every once in a while, I was uh, trying to readjust and get everything all piled up again. Today's breakfast is kind of a bare bones special. Some maple brown sugar oatmeal, some Nescafe three in one instant coffee, and if I still feel like I need it, a maple glazed pecan and sea salt bar. These kind bars are amazing by the way. If you ever get a chance to uh, try one out, they make a lot of different flavors, but uh, so far I've liked them all. And this one's really good too. The trick with these is that they can get really hard when they're frozen, so throw them in your pocket for a little while, warm them up, and then they're uh, a lot chewier, easier to, uh, to eat. How about that spread, eh? Oatmeal, coffee. Ah, it's a camper's delight. <laughs> she comes. Monday morning sunrise. That's a thing of beauty, eh? Well, here's a live and learn moment. <laughs> I kind of knew this was going to happen, but I didn't take precautions against it and I don't have enough time to fool around with it. The pegs that were holding in the uh, perimeter of the teepee, eight pegs, 
are now frozen solid into the snowy, icy ground. Uh oh. Uh, I've reefed on them, but they're not coming out. So what I've decided to do is just um, cut them off and uh, leave a, an orange dangly bit visible from the top of the peg, pegs. And I'll come back in the spring and get them when, they, when the ground thaws out and they're readily available. I'll let you have a look. The stakes, the eight stakes around the perimeter are frozen solid into the ice, into the snow, which has become ice. They will not come out without some serious digging or maybe uh, some hot water. Same here with this guy. All eight of them are stuck really well. So I ended up just cutting the, the loop that was around them. Just using my, my knife to cut them off all the way around. And I'll deal with the pegs on another day. <laughs>